Hello, this is Ryan. What we've got here is a stand, and from the stand, I'm going to hang these spatulas. They're aluminum. And I also have this magnet here. This is kind of a horseshoe magnet. Really, it's two bar magnets. And so they're creating, one would be a north pole and one would be a south pole. So they're creating nice uniform magnetic field lines in between them. And this is a nice magnet because I can adjust how far away the poles are from each other. So if I get these closer together, then there will be a stronger field in between them. And if they're farther apart, there will be less of a strong field between them. What we're gonna do is we're gonna show you some magnetic induction phenomena by hanging these spatula from the stand like that. And what we can get going with this is we can get the spatula just to oscillate, swing back and forth. And as you can see, there's definitely some friction experienced by that thing, but not a lot. It will just swing forth and back for quite some time. Eventually it does stop, but when it's allowed to swing, it will swing forth and back quite often. This is technically creating a physical pendulum. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this aluminum spatula and I'm gonna put it in between the poles of this magnet while it hangs. Now, something I want to show you is that this is not magnetic. Aluminum is not magnetic. It clearly doesn't stick to these, uh, but this is definitely a magnet. Uh, and so I can show you some of the inductive phenomena with this setup. So I'm going to hang the spatula from our stand. And I'm going to make sure that the spatula is hanging right in between the two poles of our permanent magnets. These are neodymium rare earth permanent magnets, so they're very strong. Now, if you remember when I swung this before, it swung pretty freely. Now that it's going to swing between those two poles, we'll see the magnetic induction phenomena. Ah, it definitely slowed way down, didn't it? And I can show you something better if I move these poles in so that they're closer to the spatula and I swing it. What do you think should happen? Would it slow down faster or slower? So if I take it and release it. Oh, it clearly slows down much faster. That's kind of the same phenomena that dictates magnetic breaking. As the spatula swings into those poles of the magnet, it has no magnetic flux inside of its area. As it enters those poles, it's now increasing magnetic flux through its area, and so it will create eddy currents to oppose that change in flux. It will continue to create eddy currents opposing that change in flux until it starts to leave the field now it wants to regain those magnetic field lines because the change in flux would be that it's losing magnetic field lines in its area. So it will produce different eddy currents in order to keep those field lines from leaving. And we can see that because it basically stops moving due to those eddy currents. I have a different spatula here. This one has holes in it, but still it forms closed loops. So we can see the difference and how they fly. So there we've got the poles spread out so they both fit and I can take them and swing. Really they seem to be working together. What if, what if I remove this one? Yeah so it looks like the one with the holes swings a little bit more than the one without but both of them are producing eddy currents to oppose the change in magnetic flux that they experience. I also have this nice afro pick. This one has holes at the bottom, so it will be harder for it to form closed loop eddy currents in its geometry. And we can see that because it should slow down much slower. Uh, yeah, and so without having those nice closed loops to form eddy currents, it definitely doesn't get slowed down like the others.
So I would attempt to discuss or talk about the changing magnetic flux in this area and why it seems to slow down so quickly. The last thing I can show you, which is quite miraculous, is I can remove the magnetic field from this spatula in a different way. And the spatula will have an induced voltage and induced eddy currents that will try to oppose me pulling this magnet out. So here we go. Now, I don't know if that was amazing to you, but it certainly was to me. I'd like to show you again. See, it is always opposing a change in magnetic flux. So if I try to pull this magnet away, it's going to try to stay with it. It will create eddy currents in order to stay with the magnet. I hope you enjoyed the spatula demo.